CodeKit includes a special language called Kit. And Kit is just HTML with special comments. You can do two things in a Kit file. One, import one file into another. And two, use and declare variables. Now, CodeKit 3 adds a really great feature to Kit, and that's optional variables. One of the things they make it easy to do is active states on nav menus. So here's CodeKit's actual website being served by the app in the background, and you can see that as I switch sections, I get an active state on my nav item. It goes gray and the other ones are blue. Now, if I inspect this element in my browser, I can see that it's powered simply by a class on the element, and that's list item active. So in my SAS style sheet, I've defined some styles that apply to this class, and the active nav element on the page gets those styles. Now, the problem is it becomes really tedious to apply this class manually to every element in this list on every different page of my website. Let's take a look at how Kit makes that process easier. Here, I'm looking at the Kit file that makes up the getting started help page of CodeKit's website. And you can see right at the top, I'm declaring two variables named page title and page class, and then I use those in header.kit and page title.kit, which are two files that I'm importing. But the lines we want to pay attention to are right here, these two. The first one declares a variable named hn underscore gs, and it sets that variable equal to that special class name of my active nav state, the one that I've styled in my SAS style sheet. And right after that, I import another file named nav.kit. That file is where I have all of my navigation menu, so it comes into every help page. If I switch over to the help page that is browser refreshing, you'll see the same two lines, but here I'm declaring a variable named hn underscore br for browser refreshing, and I set that equal to my special active nav class. And then right afterwards, I again import nav.kit. So I have these two lines on every single one of my help pages over here, and each one defines a different variable and sets it equal to that special active class. Now, if I open nav.kit, you'll see my list of navigation items. And the first thing to note is I only have to keep this list up to date in one file, right here. If I make a change and save, CodeKit will recompile every one of these help files that imports nav.kit so that my changes show up right away. The other important feature of this file is that it uses kit optionals. And that's right here, this special comment inside the class declaration on each nav item. What this optional means is, hey, if the variable hn underscore gs is defined, put its value right here in place of this special comment. And if it's not defined, just skip it. So each different page of my website defines one of these variables. And when nav.kit is imported right after that variable name, the kit compiler notices that on the getting started page, this gs variable is defined and puts my active nav class right here. But on browser refreshing over here, GS is not defined. So when nav.kit is imported into this page, that GS variable doesn't exist. Nothing goes here. But the very next one, BR, is defined. So my active nav class goes right here. And so on down the line for every one of these entries. Kit optionals give you a lot of power and flexibility to do things like active nav states and more with your code.